Of the Greek Alphabet from Elucidations of the Students' Greek Grammar by Georg Curtius. Read for LibriVox Learning Collection, Volume 3. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For further information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Of the Greek Alphabet. The separation of this first chapter, which treats the alphabet, from the second, which treats of the sounds, rests on the strict but sometimes neglected distinction between letters as such and the sounds of which they are the symbols. This difference, in itself so simple, must certainly be impressed upon the pupil. The ancient grammarians knew nothing of it. For instance, they divided the vowels into long, short, and intermediate, and in this way obtained seven vowels in Greek. Epsilon, Omicron, Eta, Omega, Alpha, Iota, Y. Whereas, as a fact, there are no more vowels in Greek than in Latin, which is five, A, O, E, I, U, or, if a difference is made between long and short, there are ten. A, A, O, O, E, E, I, I, U, U. The fact that in two cases only there is a separate symbol for the long and short sound is naturally of importance for the writing only, not for the sound. Nevertheless, down to the latest times, the greatest confusion has been caused, even by clever and learned men, because they have allowed themselves to be missled by the old method of writing in which E, as is well known, represents both the long and the short vowel into the idea that in certain cases the long vowel could arise out of the short one. Thus, from the old method of writing Homeros, the conclusion has been drawn that the middle syllable of the word was once short. With equal reason, we might argue that every Latin E must have been originally short, because in Greek the symbol E continued to be used for the short vowel only. The distinction between long and short vowels is a fact of great antiquity in the Indo-Germanic languages, but the most of them never carried it so far as to use any different symbols at all for the long and short vowels, and the Greeks only in the case of Epsilon and Omicron. With regard to the accent also, it is important to distinguish between the sign, the need of which was first felt in Alexandrian times, and the tone signified, in order to eradicate the notion which a pupil is very apt to entertain, that accentuation itself, and not merely the marks of it, is a vexatious and quite unnecessary addition to the Greek language. The pronunciation of T as T in Latin, before unaccentuated I, is here only quoted as a practice now current, without in the least intending to point it out as established or recommended. See Corson über Aussprache, Vokalismus und Betonung der lateinischen Sprache, 169. Of the many errors current in regard to the pronunciation of Greek, none is more totally at variance with the phonetic system of the language than the rendering of zeda by the hard combination z, which in common in the greatest part of Germany. Even in the middle of a word, this combination was carefully avoided by the Greeks, as for example in 
anuso for anuzzo and in crazy for crezi. And at the beginning of a word, it would, without doubt, be more intolerable still. According to all that we learn from grammarians, the sound zeda is rather to be considered one of the very softest. It contained that weak sibilant which is found in German at the beginning of words before vowels, for example, sein, soll, and which can be just as easily distinguished from the similarly written sound in ist as the French soft s in maison from the hard s in son. Being used to denote the weak sibilant exclusively in French and several Slavonic languages, this letter z is now frequently adopted in several works on the science of language as the common symbol of the weak sibilant. In Greek, this weak sibilant has in most cases arisen out of the palatal spirant yod. If, for instance, we compare the Greek Zeus with the Sanskrit name of the sky god Jaus, this D meets us just as plainly as in dia which through an intermediate dia passes into aeolic za that is za zeda therefore which is shown by prosody to be a double consonant must certainly be pronounced as z that means d with a soft s when in the Aeolic dialect we find sigma delta in the place of zeta, the change is due to metathesis of the two elements. In this way may be explained the modern Greek pronunciation, which has allowed the d to drop out and preserved the weak s only. For the origin of zeta, see further Grundzüge der griechischen Etymologie, to page 187 and the following. The lisping pronunciation of theta, like the English th, usual in modern Greek, has the advantage of marking the distinction between theta and tau more sharply, but is at variance with the nature of the old Greek theta, which is proved, Grundzüge 2, 10 and the following, to be a true aspirate. That means a sound compounded of T and H, chiefly by the easy change which takes place in many instances from T to T. Ant U is anti Hu. Teteka for Taker. By the old method of writing in Latin, Thesaurus is Thesauros, and by the evidence of Dionysos of Halicarnassus, De Compositione Verbi, Caput 14, who speaks of Prosteke to Pneumatos, in German we may perhaps express Chi and Phi, by ch and th, although they are certainly pronounced as k and p, to escape imposing upon ourselves too much that is foreign, but in the case of theta it is not advisable to accustom ourselves to a pronunciation which is foreign and also demonstrably of recent origin. End of the Greek alphabet by Georg Kotzius.